iOS 16.5 has just arrived and it contains some new changes and bug fixes that you need to know about. So in this video, we're gonna talk about those new changes along with an update on the performance, the battery life, and if you should update or not. All right, so now what's new here in iOS 16.5? And the first thing has to do with actually installing an update. And that is that you can now install updates with less than 50% battery remaining. So before you had to have at least 50% battery before you could install an update you were able to download it but you could not install it it was grayed out but now in 16.5 you can see i'm at 25 percent battery and i am able to install the software update it's not grayed out and it will actually go through now you only need to have 20 percent battery remaining to update the software without being plugged in to a charger also new in this update is this new wallpaper so this is a brand new wallpaper introduced with ios 16.5 and you can see it has a really cool animation when you go from the notification center or the lock screen to the home screen. And also if you have an always on display device, it has this little animation right there. And this also changes based on your display mode. So if I put this in dark mode, you can see that the wallpaper automatically changes as well, which is pretty neat. And you can find this in your settings wallpaper and then go to add new wallpaper. And you will see down here under pride, we have the new pride wallpaper. So it says designed with the colors of the pride flag to celebrate the LGBTQ plus community. And there are two separate ones there, but this is the new one. We also have a couple of changes inside of the new application and the first thing is if you take a look at the bottom right hand corner by the way this is 16.4.1 on the left 16.5 on the right in the bottom right hand corner you can see that before we had following and search two separate tabs but now in 16.5 those tabs are combined and you can see even the glyph icon kind of has both of those glyphs combined into one and it's now just called following and when you go to that you can see it shows following Whereas before we didn't have a search right there, it just kind of showed everything, but now we have a search bar right there along with our favorites and sports. And perhaps the biggest change here is the new sports tab inside of news. So if you go to the sports tab, you will see that we have a navigation bar up in the top left where it shows all sports. And from here you can change to a different sport. And this does also dynamically change based on the sport that is most popular at the time. So for instance, if I go to NFL, it will show me all of the NFL news. We also have scores and schedules where we can see the different schedules and the different scores when that you know is going on, when that season is going on. But if we go back and if we go to the NBA, for example, where we have games going on right now, you will see finished games and also upcoming games. And we have different coverage down here. And if we go into one of these games that has finished or like if a game is going on currently, we do have coverage down here. We have the score up top and we have this open in Apple TV button where it takes you to Apple TV where you can get the play-by-play -play or watch it on your Apple TV. And speaking of watching sports on the Apple TV, with the new tvOS 16.5, you now get a multi-view for sports streaming. So you can kind of see a quad box. You can basically watch four games at a time now on Apple TV. This is a long awaited feature that many people, myself included, have been waiting on for a while. In the music application, if you have Apple Music, you can now find the tour dates for your favorite artists straight from within the music application. So it's called set lists. And if you go to one of these set lists right here, you can see browse upcoming shows. If you tap on that, it will show you all of their upcoming shows. You can use current location to see if there are any close to you. You could also break it down by the country. So if you only wanted to see concerts in a certain country, you can break it down by that as well and then you also have the set list right here you can tap on where you get a curated playlist that shows some of the songs so you can get familiar with that artist and some of the songs they may play during that show like these songs could be included in their set list and to complement this feature apple also added more than 40 new guides in the apple maps application so you can see all these guides that will highlight the best venues to experience live music and it's not just in the u.s you can see london paris Berlin as well. So if I go to Chicago, for example, you could see where to see jazz and blues in Chicago. If you tap on that, it will take you there on the maps and it will also show you this guide where you can see some of the best venues to experience that type of music. Now, both of these features have been added server side. So you don't necessarily need to be on iOS 16.5 or later, but they did just get announced today on the day that 16.5 was released. This update also includes some bug fixes. And the first one has to do with HomeKit devices. 
is. So pairing HomeKit and Matter accessories was completely broken in 16.4 and 16.4.1, but thankfully 16.5 fixes that. For example, I was not able to connect my NanoLeaf lights to the home application on 16.4.1, but once I updated to 16.5, they connected no problem. So if you've been having issues with the home application, home kit, or matter accessories, those issues should be resolved. There's also a fix for spotlight search where it may become unresponsive. So if you had any issues with spotlight search, becoming unresponsive where it wouldn't show anything when you searched that has been fixed. We also have a fix for screen time. So the issue was where screen time settings may reset or not sync across all devices. For example, for me, this happened with app limits. Like if I would disable an app limit on one device, it would not sync across all devices. I would have to unlock it on each device separately, but now that has been fixed. This update also addresses an issue where podcasts and CarPlay may not load content. So if you use the podcast application in your CarPlay enabled car and you had issues with it not loading episodes for different shows that should be fixed with 16.5. And then if we take a look at the release notes for this version, you will see that we have multiple fixes for home and matter accessories. So the new feature is a shared administrator in a home is now able to pair and add matter accessories. And then we also have four resolved issues that are also all related to matter accessories. So even though we have quite a few bug fixes in 16.5, there are still a few remaining issues. One of them is related to the notification center where it's kind of glitchy. It's kind of laggy here. You can see these bubbles come in really janky. So that's been going on for a while and it's still here in 16.5. Also inside of Safari, we still don't have the select all option. So if you select some text and you try to look for select all, you're not going to see it because that is still not here on 16.5. And then as far as security updates go, Apple has not disclosed the security patches just yet, but once those are out, I will let you know immediately on Twitter and also in the next iOS weekly episode coming up on Friday. But as usual, you should expect to see some security enhancements with this update. So if none of these features appeal to you, at least the added security could be a reason to update. Now, as far as the performance goes, performance actually feels a tiny bit better than 16.4.1. Now, this is not a major difference. I only notice it because I mess with these software updates, you know, every single day. So I notice the small changes. So I do think performance has been improved a little bit in terms of just overall smoothness and raw performance. I'm not talking about bugs. That's not really fully related to performance because we did see the bug fixes in this update as well. That is separate. I'm just talking about raw performance. Now, in comparison to 16.4.1, the Geek Bench 6 scores are actually significantly higher. So we have a 2516 and a 5944. That is for the multi core, and the 2516 is for the single core, both of which are much higher than what we saw on 16.4.1. And then, as far as battery life goes, I've been saying for quite a while now that battery life has been the same because I really don't like saying battery life has improved in every single update when it really hasn't. But I will say that 16.5 actually improves the battery life on my main device, my iPhone 14 Pro. And you can see here the battery charts comparing 16.5 to 16.4.1, and I'm getting better on screen time and also better idle time in terms of battery life when my phone is idle. So I'm not going to claim that 16.5 is just going to magically fix your battery drain, but you might see an improvement in battery life after updating because I definitely did on my iPhone 14 Pro. So now should you update to iOS 16.5? And I say yes, absolutely, especially if you're already on 16.4 or 16.4.1, because not only do you get the added security enhancements, but you also get that new wallpaper. You also get quite a few bug fixes. And most importantly, at least for me, you get improvements in both performance and battery life. So I think for all of those reasons, it's worth updating to iOS 16.5. But of course, as always, if you're somebody who likes to play it safe and you tend to have a lot of issues on your device, just wait a week and see you know, if anything comes up. I will let you guys know if there's any major bugs or issues. But you know, this late down the line, that's not usually the case, but it is always a possibility. So if you are somebody who plays it safe, you might want to wait for a week. I also wanted to briefly cover 
discover watchOS 9.5, which you can see I have installed here on my Apple Watch Ultra. This was released alongside iOS 16.5, and I don't think there's enough features to make this into a full video, but I just wanted to show you a few things that have been changed here. So first off, in the face gallery, you will see that we have the new Pride Celebration watch face. And if you tap on that, you will see you get the option to change between these different backgrounds, you get the different styles, and also you can change your complications right here as well. Also with watchOS 9.5, if you go into settings, general, and then software update, you can see that just like with iOS and macOS, we get the option for beta updates right here, where you can choose if you want the developer beta, the public beta, or to not receive betas at all. And then finally, let's talk about what to expect next from Apple. And next up is most likely going to be iOS 16.6 beta one. And we could see that really as early as this week. Now keep in mind, 16.6 is going to be a very minor update, kind of like 16.5, but maybe even less significant because we're not really gonna see any new big features with iOS 16. Apple is focusing on iOS 17 at the moment, but we should see 16.6 betas start out very soon. And then we should see the final release for 16.6, maybe at the end of June, maybe early July. But all eyes, of course, are going to be on iOS 17 at the Worldwide Developers Conference, which takes place on Monday, June 5th. Now I will be live streaming here on YouTube during that event, so make sure you are tuned Tuned in, make sure you are subscribed to the channel so you don't miss that live stream. So that is iOS 16.5. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe for more iOS update videos just like this one. But, anyways, guys, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.